In many American cities and states, there's growing talk of providing reparations with no single vision of the form it should take. Evanston, Illinois is using money from a sales tax on marijuana to give some black residents who experienced housing discrimination $25,000 in housing assistance. In California, a task force made up of slaves' descendants is in a two-year process to propose reparations. Other recent efforts include scholarships from Catholic nuns for black students in Louisiana, a $27 million plan at Princeton University, $1.7 million from the Virginia Theological Seminary, $1.1 million from an Episcopal diocese in New York, and $13 million from another in Texas. But there's formidable opposition to the new efforts, and some of it comes from the very people who would benefit from reparations. I really think that it's being, it's, it's white guilt, and, and what they're demanding is extortion money. Robert Woodson led civil rights demonstrations in the 60s. Today, he heads a group that helps poor, high-crime neighborhoods devise their own recoveries. And he's an outspoken critic of reparations. If you could briefly define reparations, what is that to you? Reparations is supposed to be some uh, material compensation for slavery. And back in the 60s, we were talking about the hand, clenched fist, black power and self-determination. Today, we have devolved to Black Lives Matter with the hand out asking for compensation. So I just think uh, reparations is really a distraction. It, it deflects attention away from the real uh, challenges facing uh, the black community and the country. Woodson raises questions about reparations for which he says there are no good answers. How does one settle on an amount? Who exactly gets it? How would the millions of biracial families factor in? The very fact that there were thousands of freed blacks who owned slaves. There were Native Americans, the, these five civilized tribes. There were 5,000 slaves when they were on that trail of tears. They took with them thousands of African slaves. Now, do the offsprings or the, the families of those uh, Indians who own slaves, do they pay? <laughs> How about the, the, the descendants of the free blacks that own slaves, do they pay? Here again, what is the purpose? Is it to punish white people for the sins of the past? Are we seeking cosmic justice? I think we have to be clear as to what is the purpose of it. There might be people who say, you could be right, this may not be helpful, but if it doesn't hurt, what's the harm? Well, the harm is, it really um, pre presents the, the critical problem as somehow being external. The problems that black America faces is external, and that white people have the power to change it if we can make them guilty enough. That's a complicated, confusing, self-destructive message to send to young people, that somehow all of the problems that they face, underemployment, out of wedlock births, drug addiction, babies being shot to death, that all of those problems are, 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 are within the control of white America to change. That's the danger of the message. You might not have heard as much about them, but billions of dollars in reparations have been paid throughout American history. In 1848, a freed black woman named Henrietta Wood was working as a housekeeper when a white man kidnapped her back into slavery. Freed again after the Civil War, she sued for damages and wages and won an award from an all-white jury. Since then, federal and local tax money has been given for black scholarships, cash payments, and community development. In 1971, Alaska Native Americans received a billion dollars and 44 million acres of land. And in 1988, American taxpayers gave $1.2 billion, $20,000 per person, to 60,000 living Japanese Americans who'd been held in detention camps during World War II. Whether there will ever be one big national settlement for slavery remains to be seen. A congressional proposal to study a federal reparations program hasn't gone anywhere since April.
But the debate is stirring long-standing resentments and even dividing civil rights allies. Where in the world does anybody identify someone as their victimizer who knocks them down and they demand that the victimizer come and lift them up? If somebody does, they ought to take you to a mental institution. The victimizer might have knocked you down, but the victim has to get up. And it also prevents black America from addressing the enemy within. The black on black murder rate that is occurring, white people can do nothing about that. That is an internal enemy that must be addressed internal to the black community. So what I'm recommending, there be a one year moratorium on talking about white people at all. Just stop talking about white people for one year and come together within the black community and talk about what we can do to address the enemy within. It doesn't make things right. No. It doesn't mean things are forgiven. No. What does it do? Um, Georgetown has stepped up in a leadership position. I expect them to use all the expertise that they have at their fingertips and in their students and their alumni and connections in the world to figure that out. One economist from Duke University has estimated that a comprehensive reparations program would cost the federal government and taxpayers at least $11 trillion. Head on